when talking about motion, the first thing that we need to make sure that we have done is set up a system of reference or a system of coordinates. Because what we're, talk what we're doing when we're talking about motion is we're trying to describe the changes in position of an object as a function of time. So when you're talking about changes in position, that means that you know what the position is of the object. And to know the position of an object, you have to, uh, what you're talking about is that you know the position of that object with respect to something else. So that something else is going to be, we're going to call it the origin of the coordinate system. And uh, we need to define the axis uh, that we will use to determine, to specify the position. So in this case, we have used the yellow lines represent the coordinate system that we have chosen. This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Positive x-axis here, negative x-axis here, positive y-axis here, negative y-axis here. Once we have determined that this is the point that we want to use as a reference point, where all the distances, all the positions are going to be measured with respect to that point, then we can uh, proceed to measure the position of the object. So the simplest kind of motion that we find in nature is called constant velocity motion or uniform motion. What that motion looks like is something like this. What you're seeing there is a metal piece, a rider, that is riding on top of an air track, which is this white line over here. So the motion of that object, if you were to record the position of that object, say every 0.4 seconds, uh, you will see uh, the blue points are, are showing that position of the object at those times. Uh, you will see the distance between the points is the same. So and for this kind of motion, constant velocity motion, the object moves over, over an interval of time delta t, the position of the object changes by the same amount, we'll call delta x. So if you were to plot the data of the position of that object that you saw moving from left to right, the position of that object with respect to time, you would see that the data points, which are the red dots in your screen, they will align, they would fall on a straight line. This is the signature of uniform motion, constant velocity motion. The fact that it is a straight line tells you that there should be a linear relationship between the position and the time. We're going to write that linear relationship in the following way. If you take two points, any two points, you can choose as your initial point and your final point. If you take two points, say this one and that one, the position of the object at the initial time, let's call it x sub i, and the position of the object at the final time, let's call it x sub f, then uh, x sub f can we obtain from x sub i by adding this distance delta x well a delta x divided by rise divided by run or you're calling delta t the difference in time between those two points rise divided by run is the slope so this is what we call the velocity delta x divided by delta t is the velocity of that motion so in terms of the velocity of course then the final position of the object is equal to the initial position of the object plus v delta t. I have another example here of uniform motion and uh, you can see it in the bottom movie here. We have the same object as before, it's moving now from right to left. But for this uh, motion you can see that uh, if you were to plot the position versus time data, it also falls on a straight line. This object is also moving with constant velocity. Now the difference, there's two differences between the motion of the bottom and the top object. The first one is that you can see that um, the bottom object is moving a lot slower than the top object. So that you can see it in two ways. 
you can see that the velocity is smaller because the distance between the points is smaller. For both movies, the difference between uh, uh, the time difference between adjacent points is 0.4 seconds. So you can see that the distance traveled by the object in the top movie in 0.4 seconds is bigger than the distance traveled by the object in the bottom movie, the same 0.4 seconds. So that also shows up in the, you can see that in the plot of position versus time. Because the slope of a plot, you can tell that is a lot smaller than the slope in the upper plot. The upper plot is a lot steeper, the lower plot is, the, the slope is a lot smaller. But that slope, apart from being in, in absolute value smaller, is also negative. It's sloping down as opposed to sloping up in the upper plot. The fact that it, the motion is sloping down means that your velocity is negative. That motion for the lower movie is described by a velocity that is negative. That goes, of course, with the fact that the object was moving in this direction. Whereas in the top movie, the object was moving in that direction. This corresponds to a positive velocity. This corresponds to a negative velocity. In terms of the plots, this slope is positive. The slope is positive. In this case, the slope is negative. Again, for both motions, the velocity is a constant. Notice also that this uh, can be a source of confusion for some people, which is that the velocity for the upper motion, when the object is here, it is positive when it is in the negative x-axis, but the velocity is the same when it is in the positive x-axis. The absolute value, the value of the position of the object, does not determine the velocity. It is the difference in position what determines the velocity. Sometimes people uh, write an equation like this. This is incorrect. The velocity is not defined as position divided by time. Velocity is defined as difference in position divided by time. If it was velocity equals position divided by time, then you will get different velocities when x is negative and when x is positive. You'll get in one case negative velocity and in the other case positive velocity. That is not the case. The velocity of the object is the same regardless whether it is in the negative x-axis or in the positive x-axis if the object is moving with constant velocity. If you want to find out what is the value of the velocity, if you want to make a measurement and figure out how much is the velocity of that object, you would take two points, doesn't matter which points you choose, let's say that you chose this point and you chose this point, this is going to be your initial point because as at the earlier time, this is your final time, so you're going to call this your final position, this is going to be your initial position, and what you would do is you would take the difference in position to find the velocity, you would take the difference in position, which you call delta x, delta x is final position minus the initial position, you would measure that, you would calculate that. Uh, for this uh, particular plot, we know that it's going to be a negative number because the final position over here is less than the initial position. And you would measure delta t. Calculate here how much is delta t for the two points that you chose. So delta t is t final minus t initial. Delta x is x final minus x initial and your velocity therefore will be calculated by taking delta x and dividing by delta t and that would be your velocity the velocity of the object that you are measuring